When people think about what an Asian look like, they often think of someone who looks like me. There are over 50 countries and territories in Asia, from Turkey in the west to Russia in the north and east to Indonesia in the south. There are more than 2,300 languages spoken and thousands more diverse cultures. May is Asian Heritage Month and it, it, it gives us all an opportunity to learn about the important roles of Asian Canadians and their contributions to their respective communities. Asian immigrants have helped grow Canada. From the building of railroads, fisheries and farming, Asian Canadians have shaped Canada today. There are lots of Asian people who have made really important contributions to Canada as a country. We received sponsorship to immigrate to Canada in 1985. My parents were young and scared and knew nothing about Canada, but they moved with the hope that it would provide opportunities for a better life. My father immigrated to Canada 13 years ago with his family in order to provide better educational opportunities to his children. I came to Canada in 2012. On the first day, I was afraid to go to class because I did not know any English. In 2013, I came to Canada and uh, to be honest, I was scared to go to class. I had a fear that I would not blend in with the rest of the students. It was a huge adjustment for me and my wife, adapting to a new country. Our first few months were not easy. People of Asian origins have also always had to deal with racism, even here in Canada. Some examples include the Chinese head tax, which until 1923 made people coming into Canada pay a tax if they were Chinese. Japanese internment camps during World War II, which saw the Canadian government lock up thousands of innocent Japanese Canadians, making them prisoners in their own country. And the Tamil refugee incident of 2010, where nearly 500 men, women, and children trying to seek a safe place to live in Canada were detained for a long time when they arrived simply because of where they were from. Asians began arriving in Canada well before it became a country. Yet, over 200 years later, we continue to be othered. Now with coronavirus and some people calling it the Chinese virus, there's even more anti-Asian racism happening all around us. I think one of the most major problems that the Asian community faces is how normalized racism and microaggressions are towards us. And in my culture, I'm Pakistani. Hair means a lot to us. It symbolizes your ancestry, your ethnicity, and when I would go to school with my hair tied up in a braid, oiled, I would get made fun of a lot. At first, I didn't think much of it. Year after year, it added up. And in high school, I finally decided to cut my hair. So that day when I cut my hair and my mother came in and she saw what I had done, I was expecting her to freak out, to lash out on me. None of that happened. She quietly walked back downstairs and I just stood there. I go downstairs and I ask her, I'm like, why aren't you saying anything? And she goes, you cut a piece of you for a society that doesn't care about you. I was born and grew up in China. I speak Mandarin and learned how to play a Chinese music instrument called Erhu through teaching the language and music. I see the young Canadians celebrate their heritage. I see them connect to their family histories. I'm here today speaking fluently with confidence because of the support I receive. With gratitude, we are able to give back to our community and support our family back home. Asian Heritage Month makes me feel very proud of my cultural background. Events like Asian Heritage Month really boost the confidence of many students and encourage them to ask for help without feeling ashamed. Please take time this Asia Heritage Month and beyond to recognize and appreciate how Asians have positively contributed and continue to contribute to the development of Canada. And please continue the conversation. <laughs>